again to another episode of Otter Creek in Rio Grande. I believe this is my fourth video of building my staging yard, my West End staging yard. And what I'm going to get started doing is laying the cork. And you can see I've got a pretty big roll of this stuff. I hope it works the way I want it to because it's unlike the stuff you buy specifically for model railroad stuff, this is pretty pretty large in the uh, the pressing of the cork itself, but I don't think it's gonna be too bad. I think it'll work the way I want it to. And before I, before I start gluing it down, I've still got the notch that I need to cut out for the wall plug, and then I've got another little area on this side over here that I need to cut out because I mismeasured and just need to kind of clean things up before I get started gluing. enough to try and glue all of this down at once over the whole length of the board. So the plan is to do maybe about six to eight inches just at this end, making sure that everything is nice and square on this side and then down the side that will align with the wall. madness I'm, I'm glued down here the first eight inches or so and this end here I've just got clamped down so the idea is to leave this dry overnight and of course come back and, and work on the rest tomorrow so I'm gonna leave this like it is and I'm gonna get started on the other half of the staging sub road bed. All right, I've got this end was nice and dry and ready to work with this morning. So it's, it's good and I went ahead and did another, I don't know what that is, probably two feet, maybe a little more than two feet. I'm just gonna do a little bit at a time until I get it all, all glued. Probably won't wait for this to glue overnight I'll probably just give it a couple of hours, make sure it's it's good and, and, and in place, and then move my operation down a little bit further as I go. I did leave this end just a little bit proud of, of the wood itself, just, just enough that I can come in with a sanding block and make everything nice and flush. The other end, the cork actually came out just a little bit shorter than the plywood was, which won't cause many problems on that end because I'm not joining up with another piece of plywood uh, in, in the same way I am on this end. So I'm gonna go in and get started on doing some more work on the west end of staging while this sets up. this time. I went ahead and did a better job of marking where the rails actually were on the top of the board here so I can clearly see that this is the tangent and then the diverging line then begins a new tangent 
going off to the left down there. So I've got all the holes drilled, and I also drilled an alignment hole down through the PCB tie so that I can align every one of these switches in at least one point in addition to the throw out bar to kind of help make sure I get everything lined up where it was originally. Well, there's the cork. Turned out pretty good. I'm, I'm well pleased with how this is looking so far. Now the cork itself kind of has some unevenness to it. I'm not sure if it's just the way the cork was pressed from the factory. I did everything I could, you know, to make sure that the glue was not balled up anywhere so that you'd get any unevenness as a result of the glue. So I don't think it's the glue. I think it's the way it just came from the factory. And it's not bad at all. But I went ahead and, and created a, a nice wide sanding block. I'm gonna hit the tops of everything where the track is gonna lay just to kind of make sure it's nice and even. So I'm, I'm ready to do that. Now the next process is gonna be marking all of the drill holes for the throw bars. And let me show you how I'm gonna do that. Now this is virtually identical to what I've already done. The only real difference is, is I've gone ahead and put a piece of tape in here uh, for a couple different reasons. One is, is that your hole disappears as soon as you take the drill bit out and you can mark it you know, with a marker, but then it's a little ambiguous as to where the actual hole is. By putting the tape on here, you can really easily see where the hole is. And then I also wanna drill from the top down and the tape I'm hoping will reduce some of the tear out of the cork, because this cork is pretty big. You can see how large the chunks are in here, unlike what you buy for model railroad purposes. So, you know, I'm a little concerned that I'll get tear out and I'm gonna go ahead and go through with, you know, a little bit bigger drill bit here, one, one big enough that should easily go through what's already there and then create a nice pilot hole for the actual drill bit size that I'll come through for the tortoises, which I don't remember what size of drill bit that is, uh, but I'll show you that after I get done with it. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna film 
all of this because it's pretty self-explanatory and you've already seen it. And I spent four hours last night editing eight minutes of video. So, uh, and, and I do like the way it all turned out. Uh, just, just like the previous video, I'm, I'm kind of fond of how I did that. Let me know what you guys think. You know, did, did you like kind of the change in format on the previous video and this one? The way I've been doing things in the past was kind of telling you what I'm going to do, doing it off camera, then coming back in and showing you what I actually did, which is not always what I plan on doing. But uh, let me know, and I'm going to get started on this and, and show you how it all turns out here in a minute. One of the things that I despise doing when installing a tortoise is trying to figure out what the length that the, the wire needs to be up through the bottom of the layout. And now I've only ever worked in N scale and HO N3. So the distance between the rails is, is narrow and trying to get a cutoff wheel in there or power pliers is, is really tough. You end up kind of scarring up and nicking things you don't want to. And I'm terrible at mathing. So I've devised this jig to kind of help me maybe take some of the work out of that. And maybe I can mass produce these wires, you know, in an afternoon and have plenty of them and take the work out of it. So what I've done, I've got this PCB tie, which is the same thickness as my throw out bar. And I've got a length of wire here. And all I'm gonna do is take this hacksaw blade, which it's a fine tooth, go in and I'm gonna make a mark. Now the idea wasn't to cut it, but just to give me a nice guide to where I can cut it off with some wire dikes. Now you can see I have just maybe a millimeter sticking up above the top of the PCB tie. And that's what I'm looking for. Just enough to come all the way through, but not so much to grab the magnetic trip pins. What you're looking at here is the other end of my jig. And before I got started on going ahead and just drilling everything out on, on the staging yard, I thought I'd better do some, some tests just to make sure I knew what I was getting into before I tried it for the first time on the layout. And so I drilled some test holes and what I found was when you drill with a regular drill bit, you're gonna get a lot of tear out. And of course, the torque of the drill bit is gonna take you off center. And if I turn this upside down, I could show you that this hole wandered off center quite a little bit of where you'd want it to be. Now this one up here was with a Forstner bit. What I discovered with it is you can take it and drill by hand, just like you would, you know, a brace and bit, down through the cork. And because of its design, it's got a nice, really sharp pointy end. You're gonna stay on alignment a lot better. And then I also come from the bottom up towards the top and get a nice straight line started there. And if you, if you measure how far you need to go, you can come all the way up to where you're just got a little bit of wood to punch through. And then the cork drills out by hand really easy. And, and yeah, it's, it's tedious and it takes a lot of time, but the end result comes out with your throw bar pin being right where you really want it to be, or at least that's, um, I, I nailed it on this one. And another thing I might, might add is that I went ahead 
and went in with a Dremel and etched out where the throw bar is gonna go. I think it's a little too deep. I think I can adjust that up a little bit because you don't need to take out a lot. You just wanna make sure that your throw bar is not scraping along the top of your cork. So stand by and we'll see if this actually works. Well, that worked pretty good. I'm, I'm pleased with how this turned out. I kind of proved to myself that if you do things right, you can make it work the very first time. It needs a name like the T tortoise tester or something like that. T tortoise tester. At any rate, I, I feel confident now with the Forstner bit, I can go forward with the layout and, and make things work quite well. So that's what I'm gonna get started doing. This one and one other one, despite my best efforts, ended up turning out pretty ragged. What happened here is I had a little too much downward pressure and the drill bit went all the way through at once and then the chuck of the drill hit here and tore it up. But you know, it's no big deal, but I'm just one of those people that likes things to be a certain way. Same thing happened here. You'd think I'd have learned the first time that I'm stubborn. Another thing that I that I could have done and I would have done, except I completely ran out of glue, is to go ahead and, and maybe saturate these areas with some thinned down carpenter's glue, which would give them more rigidity and, and they might cut a little bit better. And I just didn't do that. I. I ran out of glue yesterday and I still haven't glued down the rest of the cork on the west end of staging. So I'll get some glue sometime probably later this evening. Right now I'm having too much fun playing with the cork. I've got started doing some sanding and you can see where the high spots are in there. You know, when I first run my hand down through there after I got it put on, you could, you could feel obviously that it was it was pretty rough in there kind of like waves water waves i can't feel any of that now after probably 15 minutes of sanding probably not even that long but i'm tired i'm not going to do any more sanding tonight it's sunday evening uh, it's the weekend before thanksgiving so mm -hmm. 